I'm going to share with you my story and really on why um, the inspiration about uh, how I got to start with this tennis injury prevention. Don't laugh. <laughs> Don't laugh. All right, that's me. <laughs> so, so tennis started for me at a young age. Okay, just going along with my parents to the tennis course. They were usually playing on a Saturday afternoon, very social. I had a dream about playing Wimbledon, actually, I mean, winning it, really. I, don't, I think every little kid has that dream of, of doing that. I can't remember a lot of, uh, that I watched a lot of tennis, but the one Grand Slam that was showing on the TV was, was Wimbledon. And I don't know, it just, for me, um, that sound of the tennis ball, I don't know if you guys have listened, it just sounds different. It always felt to me like it was played in a church. I just, it had a, a real special meaning to me. But what really turned it into a dream for me was uh, when my first uh, coach, he actually, after my first tennis lesson, just told my, parent, my mom that, you know, she has the talent to, to win Wimbledon one day. And I kind of, whether I, a blessing or a curse, I, you know, believed him. My question is kind of, how many kids dream to be playing Wimbledon? And I have my little kids over here, and I get a couple of stays a little bit later on. And how many kids hear that from their coaches? And how many actually become, uh, they, get, they make that future a reality, right? I don't know if you guys can recognize Cara Black over there, if, you, if you're tennis players, Jeff Kutzia and Jessica Steck. And basically, they all made top 50 in the WTA. So that was pictures of us where we were little, and you know, we all ended up playing on the pro tour. So that's just how you don't know with the little kids, you know, they dreams. We have to try and keep them healthy. Novak Djokovic, yes, actually, he was one of those kids that said when he was eight years old, I want to be number one in the world, and he made a pretend Wimbledon trophy. Watching tennis on TV, and plastering your walls with posters and dressing up like Andre Agassi with those big cycle pants. I don't know if you guys remember that. Drawing, trying to remember all the different action, service actions of all the players. Those are just but a few things. My sister made this for me and it was after I got my wisdom teeth taken out. So she said one day and she put it on her door wall. So it just shows you how much everybody knew how much of a dream I had. I was my coach and I won the Junior US Open there. That's one of them. And Kevin Curran, I don't know, do any of you know Kevin Curran? Do you remember him? He lost in the finals of the Wimbledon 1985 against Boris Becker. Uh, he was my manager for a while. So I really had some awesome guidance uh, when it comes to just getting and pushing me up to that professional level. I received two sporting awards in South Africa for most promising sports star. And basically what you don't know is I had to ask my wrist surgeon to please take my white cast off uh, literally a week earlier so that I don't have to, you know, receive my trophy in front of the whole South Africa on TV with a big white cast. So that just to show you what's going on behind the scenes. So little did I know that my biggest, my biggest challenge was going to be my tennis injury. So everything went really well. Like I said, I won the two Junior US Open doubles titles. And my dream became half true when I played at Wimbledon at age 15. So that was one of my dreams that it came true. And then it it, at its closest, when I lost in the third round of Wimbledon against number nine in the world, and then she lost to Yana Novotna, and who won the title. So that was back in 1998. So that, that really was a great tournament for me. And a lot of people, you know, had big expectations for me. And I want to share that with you because right after my match, I was so excited because my match was like um, broadcasted in South Africa. And um, in Afrikaans, it's, and so in English, that means Serena wanted to wave for her mom on TV because I was sitting on the, on the court and I was just so amazed for, for playing. So it just shows you, you're gonna go through those little stages and then you know, you're know you gonna be like, whoa, what's going on? Everything is just broadcasted. So it's really cool like that. This one actually says I was a Steffi of Pretoria and I practice against boys. <laughs> My injury challenge. And so this is where things started. Eventually I had two shoulder injuries. It just, all, all, all the, all the um, achievements sounds pretty great, but what you don't know is, is really the fight and the tears and the frustration every time your wrist starts to hurt again or when you add a tournament and, you know, you just, it, it just, things start to hurt. And it's just really, really annoying because you know you have the talent to get there, but you just can't. I already had surgery in multiple, like two shoulder, two wrist, and cortisones. I can't even tell you how many cortisone injections I had, like before age 19. There are a few things that I've realized that actually causes you to get injured. The first one is equipment. When I was 15 or 16, 
I actually, an ATP guy, he was playing doubles, top 10, 200 pounds, and he was basically playing with a racket that was so stiff and it had like, it's strung at 75 pounds. Why would a 16 year old girl play with a racket like that? And you can imagine for three, three to six hours every day of practice, eventually your wrist will break down and get hurt, right? The next one was technique. Why did I have to ask my shoulder surgeon to actually come and do the courts with me? He had no knowledge about tennis. And I asked him, please, can you just look at my service action? Because I keep getting hurt already at two surgeries. My shoulder surgery is what eventually just stopped my career. I was alongside some of the top players. I played against Moresmo, Playsters, and all these people, but I just, I couldn't stay up with them because I, I fell away. The preventive care part, <laughs> that's actually Nadine. She's right there. She's going to talk to you guys also. I, I didn't take the preventive care serious enough. I did not think about stabilizing my shoulder all the time like the physical trainers were always telling me. They were just... I would do all these pounding on the tennis court already, and then I would go do plyometrics. And you can imagine I got four stress fractures in my teenage years. So just really silly stuff. I, was, I had a really good work ethic, but it was just the wrong stuff. So nutrition. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I look really fat there. And um, so <laughs> I ate so much pasta and cereals and gluten. And, you know, I just didn't realize that it was actually slowly killing my career. That's why I got so much inflammation all the time. So nutrition is so, so important. And especially at a young age, um, when you're a teenager even, that's what's going to determine how you're going to do for the rest of your career, really. The only antioxidants I knew was wine, probably. So, <laughs> um, which <laughs> probably also caused me... A, I'm joking, but yeah, it's just... <laughs> Uh, that's why we have um, some experts here today to really tell you more about nutrition and anti the real antioxidants, not the ones from the wine and the cheese. Just... And there's the mo mental and emotional part. You know, the amounts of stress that goes through your body when you travel week after week, when you, um, the, the stress of losing, the stress of like just being alone on tour sometimes. And Liesl can tell you that as well. Some financial stress, there's just so much going on. There's a whole package that you have to be aware of. It was just a matter of time to like crack. The dream crasher. <laughs> and it just, it destroyed me. <laughs> and that's usually what happens to a lot of tennis players, you know, when they don't, they put all their effort into things and then it just pfft, goes down. I went off the rails for a while. I totally lost it and I just wanted to avoid my tennis identity for as much as, because it was just too painful to tell the least. So I ended up turning to coaching because that's what I'm educated in. And since I even gave up my last year of my high school to pursue my tennis dream, which looked so promising. I went to London and I actually found a way to, to put the coaching. I, I, I was trying to play the coaching and I was trying to play, and that just doesn't work. <laughs> it was good for me as a person to find experience, to then carry over to these little ones, but it wasn't uh, for my playing career, it really wasn't the right thing. Then when I came to the Bay Area about nine years ago, I actually was, I don't know if I'm lucky or if it's just, I don't know how you say it, but I got the chance to play for one more year on the tour and I got 150K sponsorship from a client. And, you know, that gave me the chance to kind of let the tennis ghost to rest because I always thought that it was my finances that was preventing me from becoming a top player. And really, it wasn't all that. It was more about the whole package. I got introduced to USANA by Liesl Huber, and I found a way to put the, the ten, I saw an opportunity really to put the tennis and the health together. Because, you know, things that you have a painful experience in, that, that's really what, what makes it passionate later on, right? This year in March, I was really lucky. Uh, it was very, um, how can I say, uh, unexpected. And I won tickets from USANA to go in the USANA suite at Indian Wales. And they celebrate like a 10-year relationship there. It's just really cool. You know, last time I was at Indian Wales, I was actually playing. And I was just, I was sitting there and I'm just like, wow. I actually, here I am, the tennis and USANA at the same place. And it just really made sense to me. It actually gave me the courage to look back to something that, that really hurt me in so like emotional and physical way that was just really painful. Some things are inspired, you know, by the painful past experience, like I said. You know, you, you realize how you can use your story. Uh, like, a, a lot of times I think people, when you think about the things that happened to you that was sad or unfair or whatever, if you look back and you can have a different point of view, you can actually look and you can say, you know, how can I use this to carry it over to the people that has, you know, struggling with the same problems, right? 
So this is actually just to share with you guys the peak of my career. This is what I look like. I look big there, big there, and old here. And <laughs> like I had way too much wine here. It's not lipstick. You know, that's one thing I realized as well. Um, I was always exercising a lot. And I was still bulky, big, um, before I started really you know, taking care of what I put in my body. Now, I'm honest to God, I'm not lying. I don't really exercise. I do a little bit of coaching and maybe, maybe once a week. And I have the best body I've ever had in my life. So it just shows you that what you put in your body is super important. This is my before and after you saw in a picture. The next one. This is how low glycemic actually makes a difference. I mean, it's not like I was like, you know, obese, but it just, you can see, I'm just not that healthy. And now I just, I have a six pack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna show it to you guys, that's a little bit too much. But um, <laughs> the top players, if you look again, like Djokovic and all these guys, they really found a way to put their teams together. You can look at Djokovic, he had to overcome his technique. So that he had shoulder problems. And he was really, like the way he was serving before, it was, he's like top 10 in the world, but he had the wrong technique. He had to change his nutrition. I don't know how many of you know about him having to go gluten-free. He's actually vegan now. And just, it's so important. You can't eat the wrong stuff and think that your body is going to stay inflammation-free, if you like. The preventive care part, I don't know if you guys, he's the most flexible person I've ever seen. He actually does a lot of meditation. And if you think about number six of my tennis injury prevention, basically that I'm believing in that, that can help you prevent your tennis injury. So the first one is equipment. The second one is technique. The third one's preventive care, nutrition, antioxidants and supplements. And then this one is mental and emotional stress management. It became the birth of this tennis injury prevention event. And that much... Uh, why, you know, I wanted to bring health experts here today to, to share this, this with you. Um, you're going to see the champions of, my, of the future. See that little boy there? <laughs> okay, he's got a picture with Djokovic. He's also from Serbia. Um, so this is for our eight-year-olds. And really, this is my message. I want us to have, to give them the gift and the knowledge and the guidance to stay injury-free so that they can have their dream um, so they can follow their dream for as long as, you know, they have the belief for it. Stand here next to me. Oh, I got flowers. Oh, my gosh. You're so cute. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's start with you. What's your name? I'm Nico, and I'm eight years old. I'm Nico. And I want to play Wimbledon. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Nice. Okay. I'm Stefan. Um, I'm nine years old, and I want to win the Australian Open like eight times. You want to do that? Oh, man, that's really cool. That's really cool. Okay. I'm Allie, and I'm 10 years old. And? What are you going to do one day? I'm going to play Wimbledon. <laughs> and I playing with two mics here. I just love these guys. This is this is really why I do it. Why I stay inspired. Why I will do events like these. Why I would um, just go out there. And you know, I have you guys on video now. So if you play in Wimbledon, I can use you like I did with Djokovic, right? <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Okay, Djokovic.